that missed the picnic last night, you missed out. I'm still full from last night, not the least bit hungry. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Please join me in our opening hymn this morning, number 577, God of Grace and God of Glory. Rise as you are able. worship service. Welcome to those of you at home. Thank you for being with us this morning, even though you could not be here in person. What announcements do we have this morning? Don't everybody talk at once. I'll just add something. Um, it, we do have an ad board meeting coming up on September 26th at 6 p.m. in the church basement. But I wanted to add to that, um, it is now charge conference season. So last year when you remember me running around crazy trying to get paperwork filled out, it's that time again. So you might be getting a phone call from me. <laughs> That's what I had. <laughs> okay. Also, as a reminder, Community Mission Day at Hoopston is September 24th from 9 to 11. That's when they will be assembling um, personal dignity kits. You are welcome to come, and also if you wish to donate, there is a list down on the bulletin board by the door of things that they are requesting. Any other announcements this morning? Ashley's back. I'm back. I'll add one more. I just want to um, extend a big thank you to John and Suzanne for hosting um, our church picnic last night. It was absolutely delicious, and we really appreciate your hospitality. Thank you. Even though we didn't square dance like I thought we were going to, but, you know. because Jim wanted to be my partner and nobody else would square dance. <laughs> yeah, when I said square dance, he said, oh, I think it's time for me to go home. 
Okay, if there's no other announcements, please join me in our call to worship responsively. Come, let us worship the one who calls us here. Together to worship with joy and in hope. Come, let us worship the one who desires our hearts. We bring our whole selves for your worship to our God. Come, let us set aside all that distracts us from true worship. We come as we are and ask the Spirit to gather us in and direct our vision. Come, let us worship the one who calls us here. We are here to worship all that we are. Amen. At this time, I invite you to join me in our opening prayer. Praise be to you, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for your great mercy in giving us birth into a new life and a new hope by raising Jesus Christ from death. Praise be to you, our God and Father, for an inheritance that can never spoil or fade, kept for us in heaven. Praise be to you, our God and Father, for the protection of your power, ours through faith, until salvation comes at the end of time. Praise be to you, our God and Father. Father, to you be all praise, glory and honor through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. We now sing our next hymn. They'll know we are Christians by our love. It is in the Faith We Sing hymnal, number 2223, and the words are up on the screen as well. So I invite you at this time to please stand as you're able. At this time, we will move into an opportunity to share our joys and our concerns with one another, to lift up as a congregation to the Lord in prayer. Um, to begin today, I would like to lift up Harlan Blazier. He is Jean's nephew. Um, he passed away very suddenly a couple of days ago. So if we could please lift up Harlan's family during this difficult time as they are grieving and processing. Are there any other joys or concerns to share? Jerry Kay. Yes. 
Jerry Kay um, has two new great grandbabies that were just born earlier in the week. So that is an absolute joy. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> I would also lift up as a joy that we have um, Connie Wyke here to speak with us. I know that we are going to be blessed with her message that she has to bring this morning, so I'm so glad that she is here. Thank you. Are there any others? No? Okay. We will go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and merciful God, thank you for this day. Thank you for another morning that we were able to rise and come together to worship you. Lord, we're so grateful for this opportunity. We're grateful for this freedom that we enjoy to worship you openly and worship you together. Lord, I just pray your blessing over all who are here today in church, over all who are, are watching online, and just ask that, that your word, your message reach everyone's hearts today. And Lord, you are a God who knows us so intimately and so personally, and we just know that we can come to you with our joys, with our requests, with our grumbles, with our shouts of praise. We just, we thank you for that, Lord. And today, Lord, we want to lift up the Blazier family in the sudden passing of Harlan. Lord, please comfort, please comfort his loved ones. This was very sudden and unexpected, gracious God, and we just ask that you bring peace to the grieving individuals today. Please help them know that you are with them in every step of the way, and please let them know how much you love them. And Lord, we have um, so many joys to be thankful for as well. For the brand new life that came into the world, for the joy of Jerry Kay getting to see her new grandbabies, but also the joy of new life, Lord. We thank you for this because it is truly, truly a miracle. Uh, people just need to look at a brand new baby and just see your face, and we are just so grateful for that. And Lord, we are so grateful that Connie is here with us today to share her story of her work as a missionary in a faraway place from here. Lord, we just, we're excited to hear what she has done um, in, your, in your work by answering the calling you put on her life. And we just pray that you bless her as she continues to move forward and do this work as well. And God, for any other unspoken challenges today, unspoken requests, unspoken joys, we just, we lift them up and we lay them at your feet, gracious God. For you know what they are, and we take, we take hope in that, and we praise you, and we thank you. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now please join me responsively with this morning's prayers of the people. Father God, in whose love we live and move, we pray for a world crying out to feel loved, wanted, cherished, and unique. Heavenly Father, source of all love. We pray for a world torn apart by conflict and war, a world that lives uneasily in a climate of fear with no clear vision for future days. Heavenly Father, we pray for a world that thinks less of others than of self, a world where division between nations, race, religion, neighbor, and family leads to distrust. Heavenly Father, source of all We pray for a world that is short on happiness, too busy to enjoy this world you have created, 
too preoccupied with living to appreciate life. Heavenly Father, source of all joy. We pray for a world where spiritual longing is satisfied by fashionable notions and temporary solutions with no thought for tomorrow. We pray for a world that needs to know your love, your hope, your peace, your joy, and your salvation. A world that needs to know it is special, unique, and is uniquely loved by a Heavenly Father. Amen. Now is our time of offering, where we acknowledge to the Lord our gratefulness for all that he has blessed us with where we offer back our thanksgiving and praises to him, and where he will multiply the tithes and offerings that we, re that we offer him this morning. Please be in an attitude of prayer. Sue. We find ourselves under a debt we can never overcome. Every blessing we have received or hope to receive comes from your generosity. The gifts we bring to you this morning pale in comparison to the bottom line of our ledger. Yet you manage your kingdom on a different economic model, one where the equity is grace, forgiveness, compassion, mercy, and justice. You encourage us to be shrewd in the world's money, knowing it is not the currency that matters in the end. And so we pray in the name of Jesus, whose life and death paid our debt. Amen. You may be seated. So we are going to have a children's moment today. I know there, there are no kids here, but we're still doing it. <laughs> I want to invite Connie to come forward as she has a special lesson to share with all of us. Um, and while she comes forward, I invite you to say, Jesus loves me. children of God. Has God given us an age limit? Not really. So I think we should always have a children's moment <laughs> in our churches. Well, today I thought this would be a nice way for uh, me to share with our Cessna Park so that you can also share with the Rankin because they're you're going to be the first to learn how to say Jesus loves you in Chinese. And here it is. Oh my, oh my goodness. So um, I'm a missionary, um, and my placement has been overseas in East Asia region. And today we're going to learn some Chinese, which I thought would be kind of fun. So please repeat after me. Yezu. 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 
Now, Yezu in, uh, in Chinese means Jesus, Jesus. And then the second one, I. 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 And Chinese uses tone, so it's a falling tone, okay? And that word, I, think of like, I love, I love, and that's what it is. I means love in Chinese. Yezu, I. Jesus loves. And then we get the last one. Ni. Ni. I tell people, put your hand on your knee. Put your hand on your knee to remember. Okay, touch your knee. Ni. And ni in Chinese means you, means you. So now we put it all together. Ye, zu, I, ni. And we've got some motions to go with that too. All right, this is going to be cool. Okay, so hands free, right? Okay. Ye, zu, I, ni. We're going to try again. Ye, zu, I, Ni, Jesus loves you. Now, this half of our congregation, I want you to look at this half of your congregation, and I want you to do your motions, and I want you to wish, tell them Jesus loves you. On the count of three. One, two, three. Yay, zu, I, ni. Okay, this half of the congregation, are you ready? Here we go. Yay, zu, I, Okay, and everybody together. Give me Jesus' love. <laughs> oh, you did that so well. Yesu, I need Jesus loves you. And you know, you can share this with anyone uh, who is in a Chinese restaurant who might uh, speak Chinese. So when you go to your Chinese restaurant next time, you got to try it. And they will be so impressed. And then they will begin speaking to you very quickly in Chinese. And you will say, nope, that's all I know. But isn't that a great three words to know? Jesus loves you. Yes. Um, if you will please bow your heads in prayer and repeat after me. Dear Lord, Please help me. Tell many people. Yezu I ni. Jesus loves you. Amen. Well, that was fun. I think you should come back every week. Okay, this morning's scripture reading is 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves... They should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Well, I'm going to invite Connie to come back forward, um, back to the front. And um, while she's doing so, I'm going to um, pull up her PowerPoint that she's going to share with us today. Um, we are definitely in for a treat. And I have a few words to say before we get to the PowerPoint. Um, I will tell you that on the back table, um, there are these little uh, yellow cards. It says Yezu Aini on one side and all of my information on the other. So be sure to take one of these home with you. Put it in your purse or your back pocket somewhere. And if you forget, when you go to your Chinese restaurant, just pull it out and then you can flash it to somebody. <laughs> um, let's see. I... Uh, let me go ahead and uh, first of all say I'm so very pleased that Pastor Ashley reached out to me to come and speak to you. We're not that far away. I'm in Marshall, Illinois, which is kind of near Terre Haute, Indiana. Um, and uh, there's a lot of things that I have to say, um, but I just want to share with you just a little bit. Um, yes, I am a global ministries missionary who is uh, in East Asia region. Um, I've been there for about 28 years uh, in Taiwan, 
in Japan and uh, in China, and actually now I'm serving in the USA. So um, the story that happened is that I have been in, uh, in China in a, in a city called Luzhou for about 22 years, and I came back in 2020, January 7th, uh, for a, my one month holiday to help my mother move from a big house to a little house. And as soon as I landed at the airport and my brother picked me up, he said, hey, have you heard about that virus that's been going around China? And at that point, no one knew about COVID. Um, and I certainly didn't, but it just seems that during that airplane ride in the States, suddenly it became known that there was a virus that was spreading throughout China. And since then, everything shut down, no airplanes in, no airplanes out, same thing um, in America as well. And I actually have been um, in America since that time period because China is not yet allowing foreigners to return to the country. Um, and I am an English teacher. So um, I just got a message this morning that my school said that they are now applying for my invitation letter. Um, so it's been a long wait, but I was so pleased to say that the Board of Global Ministries moved my position from overseas to the United States. So I have been able to serve our church um, by vi doing visits to places and also I have a new title, Mission Advocate of the North Central Jurisdiction, so that's been very uh, special. So I've been able to serve both anywhere that I am, so I'm very grateful for that opportunity to do so. Um, I'd like to open with a prayer. It's a Chinese prayer that we sing in my Chinese church. Um, I'll give you the Chinese, the English, and then I will open uh, for, for us with that. So the words are, God is in this place. Putian Shadiren, all people on the earth, Do Ying Dang, Su Jing, ought to come before God with Su Jing, with quietness or with reverence. Chu Tsai Shang Dian Zhong, Chu Tsai Shang Dian Zhong. Amen. And the Amen is the same in Chinese as it is in English, therefore you know four <laughs> Chinese words, <laughs> which is great. Yesu, I need, Jesus loves you, and amen. Those are the ones to know. Okay, um, I think I'd like to go ahead and begin with our PowerPoint. And since you already know, Yesu, I need, every time I say Yesu, I need, that will be um, the uh, clue to have a new picture come. Okay, so. Um, I, and we'll also say um, that there is a handout in your bulletin, and that gives all of the information, some of the information that you might be seeing up here as well. Yezu Aini. So um, just briefly, I'm Connie Wyke. Um, I'm 57 years old, um, and I have a BA in English with a degree in TESOL. That's teaching English to speakers of other languages. And I've been about 30 years of overseas, and of course now I'm serving in the USA, so we have to add that to my, my list. And um, let's see, Yesu Aini. So let me go ahead and give you some information about, yeah, our next one. We're getting there, there we go. Um, our, about our partner organization in the country of China, and that is the Amity Foundation. Now, the United Methodists, um, when we send folks overseas, um, we always partner with an organization in that country. So we don't just go in all by ourselves. Um, we partner with someone. Now, this is our partner organization in China, the Amity Foundation, which is founded by Chinese Christians um, in 1985. It is the first NGO, non-governmental organization that ever existed in the country of China. Now there are thousands of NGOs, but the Amity Foundation was the 
first one. And Amity works in all areas of development to help spread the love of Christ to others since it was founded by uh, Chinese Christians. And um, the programs, social welfare, rural development, um, let's see, I think what else, health and develop, health and medical, education. I am in the education division of the Amity Foundation as an Amity Foundation teacher. Um, used to be a lot of Amity Foundation teachers, and now we have one, and I am the last one left. And we're hoping that maybe after COVID is finished, we'll get some more, so we can pray on that. Now, Amity is really known for the Amity Printing Company, and that is the printing of Bibles in China. Yezu Aini. So a lot of people don't know this, so this will be some awakening news for you. Okay, so a Nanjing Amity Printing Company prints the Bibles in China for the Chinese Christians. Um, this is an Amity Foundation uh, Bible. Nothing has been added, nothing has been taken out. It is the same NIV Bible that you have in English today. These Bi the Bible printing press was opened in 1987. It has been printing Bibles in China since that time period. People who say we need to be smuggling Bibles into China. That is incorrect. Um, you do not need to smuggle Bibles into China. They are already there. Um, and this is the proof of it. 220 million Bibles have come off the uh, presses since 1988. The largest Bible printing press in the world in China. Hello. Yezu Aini. Um, and this has been going on since 1988, 220 million Bibles. Um, and of course, there have been more since I put this PowerPoint together. Um, so, you know, and you can order them on the internet. Um, you can buy them in several distribution areas. Yezu Aini. There are 65 distribution areas that you can buy these Bibles in, in churches in China. Um, my church is actually one of them, and I'm going to show you a picture of that pretty soon. Um, so, like I said, if you would like more Bibles printed in China, we have a United Methodist Advance number that you can put that money toward, and more Bibles can be printed in China every year. So consider that and think on that and pray on that. Yezu Aini. So here's the map of China, um, and um, if you will look at that map, um, you will see there's this word called Wuhan. Okay, Wuhan was where the virus originated, okay, and it's on the Yangtze River. Um, fortunately, now today, uh, COVID is very limited in number in China. They have very few COVID cases. Every time a COVID case comes up, they immediately close down a city until they find every single person who has that uh, virus, and they quarantine them, and then when everything's free, they open up. So this is why China has been so very strict about allowing outside folks to come in because they're concerned we're going to bring the virus with with us um, but now that vaccination right um, you know have vaccinations have increased um, and the virus doesn't seem to be quite as serious as it was at the beginning they're opening up so i just received word this morning that my school is working on getting my invitation letter to return so hopefully um, by 2023 i will be back in my placement at all of these pictures that you will soon see so Wuhan is where the virus began, and where is my city located? So if you see this word uh, Chongqing, C-H-O-N, and then a Q-I-N-G, right below that Qing, that Q, is uh, the Yangtze River place where I am from, Yezu Aini, and that city's name is called, oh, that's the Yangtze, yes, there's the Yangtze, that's the um, picture right after, out of my balcony, but Yezu Aini, the next one, yes, this is the name of my city, which is called Luzhou. Luzhou, I tell people it's the name of two brothers. One is Lu, one is Zhou. You put it together and you have Luzhou. Yezu Aini uh, it has a population of five million people, which is considered small um, by Chinese standards. Yezu Aini, and people think I'm suffering. Okay, see the McDonald's? No. There's an M there right under the C, okay. Yeah, um, we have McDonald's, we have Starbucks, we have Pizza Hut, we have Dairy Queen. And just before I left China, two and a half years ago, the Walmart came to my city. So I can actually feel right at home and go back to see the Walmart. <laughs> Yezu Aini. 
So this is my college, Lujo Vocational and Technical College. Um, and this is actually our new campus. We moved here about three years ago, and it has exploded even since I have been here as well. So we've had more buildings. Um, so the round building is our library. To the right of that are the classroom buildings. To the left, um, we have the dormitories and the cafeteria and the sports field. And far, far, far to the left, you're going to see that little tall building right there. Um, that that is the um, the foreign the, well actually that is the Chinese teachers single housing unit so all of the Chinese teachers who are single and a few families live um, in this particular uh, building and I also live there and you'll see pictures of that a little later too. Yezu Aini. So um, the, our college is a three-year college, which is very similar to a junior college. So we don't give degrees, but we do give certificates of graduation. And at this college, you can learn to be a car mechanic, you can be an accountant, uh, you can work in the hotel industry, learn how to run a hotel or how to manage a hotel. Um, and you can also be a teacher, but only at the elementary and the junior high level. To be a high school teacher or more, you need a four-year uh, degree, a BA degree. So, but my college can um, give those kinds of certificates. Yezu Aini. Um, our dormitories house about 10,000 students, although now we house about 14,000 because since I've been here, we have uh, managed to have more students on the campus. Yezu Aini. And uh, this is the single teacher's housing building, which has 66 units. Yezu Aini. And here is my home. Okay, um, and this is, uh, this, this hasn't been lived in for quite some time. Unfortunately, all my plants have died since I left. Um, but um, I was told that, you know, uh, things are fine. I have a friend who checks on my apartment, makes sure everything's in place. And, uh, but it's going to be kind of dirty when I get back, so I'm looking forward to cleaning, <laughs> definitely. Yezu Aini. I teach 480 English education majors. Um, these students will be English teachers at the elementary and junior high level. Now, right now in China, it is mandatory for all students junior high and high school to have daily English classes. It is in their curriculum. Because China realizes the importance of English in the world today, it is the language of business, it is the language of medicine, it is the language of international conferences, and this is why students study English and why it is so very important. Yezu Aini. So after graduation, my students will be teachers um, at certain schools in their areas. Um, some of them will go on to uh, get a BA degree so that they can teach in high school, but a majority of them will just stay in where they are in the junior high or the elementary level. A majority, almost all of my students are from the countryside. Um, they are the first in their family to get higher education. Yezu Aini. So I have some pictures. Uh, this, uh, this is one of a former student, and this is her, her home uh, where her mom and her dad live. Yezu Aini, um, her parents, um, this is her father, Mr. Chen and Mrs. Chen, um, their income is limited to a migrant work. Her father works um, as a migrant worker during COVID for the for two years, he was not able to do the migrant uh, work because uh, China did not allow uh, anyone to leave their areas due to COVID, and therefore uh, his income was only limited to what they could grow and that what they could sell in the market. And that, of course, is Mrs. Chen. Um, cost of my school is about 900 US dollars per year, but then again, you have to pay for your food and your housing, so it ends up being about $1,500 a year, which is quite expensive for people such as Mr. and Mrs. Chen. Yezu Aini, and uh, this is Mrs. Chen. She makes about $3 a day um, in the local uh, market and selling vegetables. Yezu Aini, um, and this is uh, Liang Yu um, with her certificates on the wall. So she's now graduated. Wow, how nice is that? Yezu Aini. Uh, this is our English department faculty. We have 36. Um, I am the only foreign teacher on the campus, and now we have no foreign teacher on the campus. Yezu Aini. Um, I teach conversation and teaching methodology. Yezu Aini. 
And um, I also oversee the English Language Resource Center. This has been um, a work in progress for about 15 years until I could get this room. I was so excited to finally get this room at the new campus. I asked so many church individuals uh, on my newsletter list to help me supply this room with things. Um, we needed lots of uh, games such as Scrabble and Monopoly and, you know, and Sorry. We had lots of games that were donated uh, for this room. We had a lot of books that were donated for this room in English. And you can even see Twister and I've got kids in this room. And uh, this room is open three nights a week. Um, when I am there and it is still open, um, the English club members, they make sure that it is open even though I'm not there. Um, and and then uh, people can gather there. Um, the rule is you only speak English in the English room. We have children who come because their parents do evening classes. Um, and I told the parents, I said, hey, if, you know, if you're doing an evening class, you want to bring your child, they can hang out in our English center for two hours and enjoy themselves and learn a little English. This is an excellent way for my students, who will be teachers in the future, to practice their skills in mentoring these young people in the English language. So, I mean, you know, it kind of doubles in a way of them learning English and also helping to be a, a better teacher by helping the children too. So I'm really looking forward to getting back to this room. If you're interested in donating anything, let me know and I will tell you the supplies that I need. Yezu Aini. Um, I teach culture classes, Thanksgiving, Mother's Day, um, uh, as well as, um, let's see, oh, we got Halloween that's coming up too. Um, and also, Yezu Aini, um, yeah, Christmas. Oh my gosh. Okay, so right now in China, everybody enjoys Christmas. I have no idea what that's about. They put up Christmas trees. We've got Santa Clauses hanging out um, at the, you know, at the grocery stores. They've got little Santa hats. Everyone just looks at it as a, uh, as an, as, uh, you know, uh, the, chi the American New Year. That's what they think it is. It's American New Year, and they like all the decorations. They have not a clue what it's about. They don't understand anything. So my students, who will be teachers themselves, I cannot have them leave my classroom telling their young people, oh yeah, that's the Westerner's New Year. So we learn the religious story first, and we have a script that we read. We have uh, characters that we reenact in the classroom. You see, we have Mary and Joseph, and we got the three wise men and the innkeepers and, and the angels. And we reenact that in the classroom and we nail home that this is a religious day where Christians believe it is the birth of Jesus Christ. So they learn this story. That's the first one. And then, Yezu Aini, and then we also learn, um, let's see, yes, here we are and we take pictures as well. Yezu Aini. And then um, the second half of that lesson are the traditions of Christmas, where we learn, okay, Santa Claus and Christmas stockings and reindeer and Christmas trees. And then we have an open house. And everyone comes to my home for my open house uh, for Christmas. I got 430 students, so I block off two entire weeks in the evening, divide them into groups. They come to my house. We have Christmas cookies. We enjoy all of the decorations. And when they see my crush scene, they know that story because they've had it in the classroom, which is really important for them to understand since it is uh, one of our uh, religious celebrations. Um, I also have open houses for my colleagues. I have open houses for all of the family members and the faculty to come to my house as well. And I have a very special parter, par party for my communist party leaders at my school. And they come to my home and they enjoy my tradition of Christmas. And they are so pleased to be included in this very special day. And they learn a little bit about it too. So we share in, e in each other's culture. And of course, I also celebrate all the Chinese uh, cultural celebrations as well. So this is a really important time and I'm really looking forward to getting back to this one as well. So that's part of my job, that of being a, a teacher in China through the Amity Foundation. And then we have the part of being a Christian in a predominantly non-Christian country. Yezu Aini. 
So this is my church that I attend in Lujo. This is the Lujo Protestant Church. It was built in 1913. Um, this outer area is the new addition in 1986 with offices in it and also the choir room. Yezu Aini, but behind there, um, you will see the original sanctuary built in 1913 by the Canadian Methodist missionaries. Yezu Aini, and here's their picture. I'm so excited to have this picture to share with you. Yes, here they are. In, they came in 1907. Here they are in 1909. They set a very firm foundation of Christianity in Lujo. And when they left, they left this church um, to be continued onward with the Chinese Christians. Yezu Aini, and here they are today. This is Pastor Liao. Pastor Liao is the senior pastor um, at the Lujo Protestant Church. Um, during the COVID um, area time period when it was so serious, um, she was very good and instrumental in leading, as most of our pastors did, online services so that the church could continue onward. So she had online services during the COVID time, and now we are back open again in person worship, much as we are here in America. Yezu Aini. Um, this is Pastor Zhang standing next to her, who is her husband. So yes, they are a partner couple um, at this church. Um, the woman standing next to Pastor Liao with the little hat on her head, that is uh, her English name is Esther. That is Pastor Liao's daughter. Um, and she came to America um, on a United Methodist Women's Scholarship to study Christian education. And now she is back in China working with her uh, mother and father. And of course, the gentleman standing next to her, that's her husband. And we have a little grandbaby that Pastor Liao is holding. And I don't know who those two children are. They just jumped in the picture. So there they are. <laughs> Yezu Aini. Worship on Sunday, um, we have a full choir. Yezu Aini, and we also have about 400 in attendance every Sunday, and also the balconies are also full. Yezu Aini, uh, this is our church Christian shop where you can buy your Amity Foundation Bible as well as all of your Christian study material for children or for adults. Yezu Aini, um, and of course, all are welcome to sing in the choir. I am a choir member. Um, I am constantly on the telephone with my choir members, and they're always sending me uh, videos of the worship service that they're doing, as well as scripture lesson and so forth. So even though I've been here in the States through my cell phone, I can connect with anybody anywhere in the world, including my Chinese choir. Yezu Aini. Um, December 24th, we have traditional services uh, for Christmas. That's our big, big thing. Um, let's see. Or December 23rd, yes. December 23rd is con contemporary, Yezu Aini. And December 24th, we have traditional services as well. Yezu Aini, and of course, the birth of Christ is highlighted. Um, those are our big celebrations. And then the next celebrations, Yezu Aini, are for Easter, where we have adult baptisms, um, and always held during Easter time. Yezu Aini. So usually we have about 50 baptized into the Christian faith on Easter. Um, and uh, we have services that begin at 8 o'clock in the morning, 8 to 10, 10 to 12 o'clock. Um, we have the baptisms, and then we have communion together. And then Chinese never send people home hungry. Yezu Aini. So the church will provide meals for everyone in attendance. That includes uh, the families of those who have been newly baptized who are not Christians, have never been to church before, and they often come, and then they become Christians as well um, because of their experience of having a relative who is a Christian or their experience of just coming into the Chinese church and being welcomed and being fed a meal. Oh, my goodness, it just brings people together. Yezu Aini, we also have the Lujo Gospel Hospital. Yezu Aini, this is the first and only hospital that is run by Chinese Christians in all of China. And it, this was um, due to Pastor Liao's leadership. It opened in 2011. Yezu Aini, um, and we have uh, the hospital staff. Um, these are volunteer retired medical professionals um, and some nurses that have joined in on their days off to help serve this particular hospital. Yezu Aini, 
Um, we have a traveling medical van, or excuse me, um, those, those, these are being served those in greatest need in the area. About, we have about 100 beds available. Um, there are no pit bull in this picture because I didn't want to take pictures of sick people. That's, that's not very kind. So it is full, but not in this picture. Yezu Aini, and there's a traveling medical van that goes out into the outer lying areas to serve those in the village areas as well. Um, so now we have Connie, the teacher, and we have Connie, who is a Christian who attends church. So where am I bringing people to Christ? Okay, where is that component of what we call missionary involved in that? Yezu Aini. So let me explain to you that it is illegal. It is illegal in China for a foreigner to convert a Chinese person to his or her particular faith. It doesn't matter if I'm a Buddhist, a Muslim, a Shintoist, a Christian. It doesn't matter. As a foreigner, I cannot convert someone to my particular faith. Chinese can convert to Chinese. That is never an issue, all right? But not foreigner to Chinese. Um, however, what I can do is I can invite anyone I want at any time to come to the Chinese church. Come to the Chinese church. Enjoy the, the, um, you know, the message there in Chinese, in your own language, from people who are like you, from people who are you. And, um, you know, that's what I do. Um, after those big Christmas lessons are all finished, I tell my students, if you really want to see how Chinese Christians celebrate Christmas, come to the Chinese church. I sing in the choir. You can see me sing. Afterwards, we can take pictures. Um, you can enjoy the festivities in a church setting that is in China. And, you know, I have quite a few students every year who would come to church because of that. You know, they never would have before, but they got an invitation. And when they walk into the door, um, Pastor Liao knows they are new to the congregation. She makes sure that when they leave, they get a gift of a free Bible in their hands to take back with them. I have students who get back to me today from 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, who still have their Amity Bible. And they tell me that they read their Bible sometimes, how wise the words are. I have students who have become Christians because of that introduction. I have students that are still searching. Um, I have students that, um, you know, are interested still in this particular faith. And you know, folks, that's the way it should be. Um, Yesu Aini. This is why I love working with the United Methodist Board of Global Ministries, because we believe that partnership is so key in bringing people the word of Christ and, and telling them and sharing the love of Jesus with others. So this is why I am so very pleased to bring you this wonderful positive message and why I'm so appreciative of your support, your apportionments. That goes toward helping missionaries go to the places they need to go. So working together, um, we all bring the love of Christ to others. And I can say to you, Yesu, I need Jesus loves you. And so very happy to be here to give this message to you today. Amen. And I believe, I mean, I'm looking at, are we ready for our, are we ready for our next hymn? All right. Put it on the screen. Okay. I will move out of the way. Thank you. Can we give Connie our, our thanks and our, a round of applause? Okay. So with that, we will be singing our final hymn today, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. It's number 557 in your red hymnals, and the words will be up on the screen as well. So I invite you to please stand as you're able. Thank you. 
before we go today. Um, and I'll let you mention about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to say once again how very pleased I am to be able to be here with you today. Um, I, will, I would like us to have a group picture after we finish the benediction, just for my records and for yours as well, to post on Facebook page and so forth, so don't take off in a hurry. Okay, um, I'm going to do our benediction in Chinese and in English. So if you will please bow your heads. Jua, oh God. Today we give you thanks. Please help us to go to many places. To tell many people. Jesus loves you. Amen. I'm <laughs> 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 